Good morning, this is TCR, TroyCommunityRadio.com. I'm Glenn Myers on 1071 WTJN. For David Denoyer on TCTV, it's time for the Lincoln Community Center Report. And with us this morning, Shane Carter. How you doing, Glenn? Uh, doing great. How are you? Oh, I'm doing good, man. Glad to be back and uh, had some little adjustment in my schedules there, but uh, glad to be back and reporting on the center. And things over there are pretty peachy and just trying to keep things rolling. All right. Uh, you had a uh, alumni weekend yes, last we weekend. It was a good time, man. Uh, we had it was it was a huge crowd. We had about so we sold the chicken and rib dinners. And I think we had around 150 people um, partake in that, and then we had a lot of the, if you will, more experienced or older people that used the center back when they were younger come back. So it was a lot of laughs and giggles of old pictures and who was who and people cracking jokes on each other, which was fun. And then we had a band, which was nice, and uh, a lot of the kids got to interact with a lot of the seniors and older people and just talk about, okay, back in, this, back in the day we used to do this at the center, and you know now we do this. So it was just a, a big talk about all the history and stuff. It was cool. <laughs> I could tell by the grit on your face yeah, that, yeah, you did have a good time. Well, it's crazy because a lot of them, they'd go through and they'd like, say, who do you think that is? And everybody would ask around, who do you think that is? And then it'd be like one of our staff members or something, and they'd say, oh, my goodness, I remember Mr. Hughes used to look like that. And it's just, it was hilarious. <laughs> so it was good, man. Hey, how's your after-school program going now? I'll tell you, it's going good, Clint. Um, one thing, I'll talk about the, one of the obstacles we had first, and we talked about it two weeks ago. We now have a, such a, a large need of parents that are wanting to utilize it for their kids that the kids at Concord, Cookson, and Hook were failing to pick up now due to lack of space on the van and timing as far as our drivers from out of school. So we're working right now. I've written one grant, and then we're also working with some other people in the community to see if we can collaborate and partner on transportation or if it's even possible for us to get another van. Um, it seems like a large stretch, but realistically, we have like 12 kids right now that could benefit greatly from um, not only our services, but from the van, from a standpoint of being able to get from Hook, Concord, um, and or uh, Cookson and get to us. So the program's going good, about 40 kids, but uh, for listeners and any parents that were frustrated with our inability to transfer from, from, from some of those schools, I want to explain to them that we are working on that problem. So, okay. Kind of sounds like you could use a bus. Kind of could use a bus. I don't, know if we could, I don't know if we could afford it, but yeah, we could use one. Uh, you've got your uh, winter basketball sign-ups going on. Yeah, a lot of parents have been contacting, too. Um, we're waiting until October 15th to sign up. I know everybody's all happy about it, but we have to get through fall to get the winter. And I think we're, we're still at the beginning stages of fall. So we're going to start sign-ups October 15th. We won't really start with the league until November. Um, any parents that are interested, it's for grades K to 12. And uh, come down, sign your kid up. The cost of the league is $30. And uh, really looking forward to not only... Uh, getting the kids out and getting involved, but getting some corporate sponsors too. We've had a lot of uh, letters we've sent out to people we've touched base with through the radio station, throughout uh, word of mouth, and through just community uh, engagements and events and stuff. So, All right. I know you have a concert coming up. Now, this is the concert we've been talking about. Yes, this is the one, actually, Clint, you helped me promote last winter. <laughs> and uh, we canceled it because a lot of the Gospel Workshop of America, uh, the young ladies and men, if you will, they uh, didn't want to drive in the snow and they were worried about the ice. So. We're finally getting there. Uh, it's Sunday, the September the 27th at 4 p.m. It's free to anybody, the public, kids, and it should be a good time. They're bringing all their instruments as far as keyboards and drums, and should be a full, um, full ensemble in terms of uh, really uh, a large amount of music and a large plethora of different genres. So it should be fun. Now you also had a strategic planning event. Yes, and we're uh, that's been huge, man. We've you know I've been at the center four years now as of September 11th, and the one thing I always talked about was putting a plan in place that would be long-standing and sustainable past me and finally we've gotten to the point where we have the board and some stakeholders and Linda and Jim Daniels will be facilitating it and being able to put together a three to five year plan that uh, hones in on our vision and our mission gives us objectives and goals that are obtainable but also challenge us and then ultimately the big picture is plan for the future of the center if that encompasses an addition or a new building and or the infrastructure and staffing it will need so it's really a big a big deal um, when I got there Clint I was more concerned with can we pay the bills can we add staff because we didn't have the budget? Can we keep the building looking decent? Can we fix and repair pipes? And now it's like, okay, we believe we've been able to budget right to do those things, but now moving forward, how do we get to the next step? And I think that in my experiences, that'll take me being coached and being educated into how you take those necessary processes, but also getting community engagement, exposing the community to what our goals are, and then every day reminding, saying, you know, hey, Clinton, Dave, this is our goal at the Lincoln Center this year is to, maybe it's to get another van, or maybe it's just to, uh, improve our signage, or maybe it's to make sure that the staff is covered on all liabilities of CPR and first aid, so that everybody knows that, and we can, everybody can reiterate those goals, and we can be on the same page. Well, if somebody hasn't been into the Lincoln Community Center in the last four years, yeah. 
just the difference that it has taken on now in in looks and when you were talking about uh, uh, maintaining and things that are that are done. It's Absolutely. it's what an awesome job. And it's it's a, it takes the support staff that we have, Clint. As you know, I mean, it's like today I haven't even been into the building yet this morning, and you know the water rubbish class has already went on. Um, the tree had to be watered. Obviously, there's trash to pick up. There's certain pipes that need to be checked. There's the pool that needs to be maintained. So it takes our 15 or so support staff. And then ultimately, um, as you speak on that, I took the time, two weeks ago I had some deaths in the family. I took the time to reflect and look through pictures and some of the things of where we were with our minutes in 2011 and where we are now. And I, I'm very much so proud to say that I'm the leader, but proud to say that I've got, I believe, the right people on board to help us move forward. And that was really the key was getting quality people around the kids and people you could trust and people that have the ability to problem solve. And uh, those people, as you know, it's hard to, to pay people on a nonprofit budget, but then to be able to expect to them um, that, you know, that you're running, that you want them to run it like a for-profit business or, and be very professional. So I'm thankful that our staff has it in their heart to want to be a part of it. Excellent. Uh, you have another event that's coming up. It is uh, your CrossFit Beat the Streets. Yeah. Tell us about this. This is the second annual event. Um, Mindy Kobe, who's our, cross, our Steve's Club and CrossFit instructor for the kids, she planned this last year, her and her staff out at uh, Practice CrossFit, and just really want to talk to the community about coming out and supporting it. Um, not only is it a great event, but it's something that's going to be able to uh, benefit all the kids in Steve's Club and allow them to go on and either A, provide scholarships to them, and or B, just to expose them to other adults working out. And that's uh, Saturday the 26th, September 26th. Uh, starts at 9 a.m. out on Harold's Way at Practice CrossFit. Um, it's open to the public, is my understanding, and also um, if anybody wants to donate or support the cause, um, you can contact Practice CrossFit to support it. So, All right. Yes, uh, you had mentioned it when you brought up uh, the pool and, you know, things already have been happening this morning in at Lincoln Community Center, and you haven't been in yet. Yes. Uh, what are some of the other events? Now, the kids are back in school. I know the mornings are pretty much full with seniors. They are, and we've got, um, now that it's starting to cool off a little bit, so you've got water robust classes every morning, um, 8 and 9 a.m., then you've got the pickleballers will be coming in uh, usually Monday, Wednesday, Fridays at 9 as it cools down more. And then you've got abundance of uh, seniors and or just working people that utilize the weight room in the mornings. And then we've got um, on Wednesdays uh, through educational services, it's called Opportunity School, where there are kids that um, are emotionally and or physically uh, uh, per se in a, in a situation where they need a little bit of support and assistance. They come and use the center for gym class. So they do swimming, they do activities in the gym with Julio. Um, that's really a neat program. And then as we continue to move into the school year, we'll have some things where in the uh, mornings and afternoons, a lot of homeschoolers, uh, their parents and the kids come and utilize it for gym time. So uh, we're getting, the schedule's getting pretty packed, but I'll tell you there is space for any uh, anybody that wants to come and utilize the gym or meeting space that we could make that available. Um, and then also moving into, obviously, the fall, we'll start planning for our Thanksgiving feast. So got a lot of upcoming events we'll keep you guys in tune with. and. Uh, be thankful to uh, be able to continue to work with Troy Community Radio. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Anything thank else you. you want to add in? No, sir. Just thank you for the opportunity again, as always. All right. This has been the Lincoln Community Center Report with Shane Carter. I'm Clint Myers on 1071 WTJN. For David DeNoyer on TCTV, this is TCR, TroyCommunityRadio.com.